It is the pernicious purveyor of preposterous pomposity, the paragon of pugilistic punditry, the king of Connecticut, the suntan superman, Matt Granahan, back once again at the Berman Law Group Studios for the Berman Team, the TBT Podcast. And this is a very special edition for El Cinco de Mayo. Tenemos una mujer muy, muy linda aquí con nosotros. Ella está la hija de un luchador muy famoso del país de México, Tito Santana. Ella está el lucha, la luchador más linda, más bellísima en todo de profesión de luchador. I welcome you, a world and American national champion for the gringos that don't habla español. <laughs> she is the daughter of WWF superstar, the legendary Tito Santana. She is once again an American national and world jiu-jitsu gi and no gi champion. Without further ado, here with her beautiful daughter, Jordan, I welcome you, Jenny Santana. Oh my God, what an introduction. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank me. you for having us. It is absolutely my pleasure. Now, Jenny, uh, we were just uh, on the beautiful beach, Hollywood Beach. You're staying out there on the beach. What brings you here to the Sunshine State of Florida? Oh, so we came to go to the A4M conference. Uh, it was a, an anti-aging medicine conference, which was super exciting, a lot to learn. And then uh, that is created by Dr. Goldman. So we were able to go to his after party the after the conference ended and meet a bunch of people, which was just just fabulous and then it was in a penthouse which was like we had great pictures it was so much fun and we're here for the conference because we are opening up our own regenerative medicine clinic um in las vegas that will open probably mid-june or july uh, we're partnering with dr caprio and Angelo Caprio from Integrated Pain Management and uh, with BioRestore with Gary. So we are opening up our practice. It will be open hopefully by July, but hopefully. we're gonna focus <laughs> on all types of regenerative medicine, like IV, hormone replacement. So it's gonna be a great opportunity for uh, people in Las Vegas to start feeling their best. That is amazing because you are, Jenny, the absolute perfect Billboard, the human billboard for such a business, <laughs> because it looks like you two are sisters, almost like twin sisters. You with we a get it more your often hair a bit, know. yes, yeah. way too much. Yes, how do you stay so young, Jenny? I I just decided to stop aging a few years ago. <laughs> I mean, she 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 always says that I'm her mother, but um, no, I'm it's Hermana. <laughs> So just, just, <laughs> let's, we got to tell the truth. Like oh, yeah. she just wants to make me seem a little bit older. I know everyone, I wherever we go, they're like, are you guys sisters? Like you're here with your sister. I'm like, no, this is my mother. <laughs> we, we were walking on the boardwalk yesterday and someone was like, oh my gosh, I bet they're twins. And I'm like, yes, we are. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> no, we're not. Look like you definitely could be, could be twins, sisters. <laughs> Absolutely. Now let's talk about that because how does that work with... Jordan, as far as your friends, do you hang out with your with your mom, con tu hermana? Are you are you two good friends? We're me and my mom are she's my best friend, so yeah, I'm always yeah. with her. I think that whoever I'm with or something knows of my mother too, because they're like, oh Jenny, Queen Jenny, like <laughs> my best friend, like he's always like Queen Jenny. So like every one of my friends love her, so there's there's no controversy with that. And it's easy because we have such similar personalities. Yeah. I, I literally joke that I clone myself. And I mean, who doesn't love themselves, right? And so now I have, like, a, another version of yeah. myself. So we never have issues or anything like that. It's perfect. That's that's awesome. Now, did you grow up in Las Vegas, Jordan? 
So for two years, because she said we moved out in 05 and I was born in 03. For two years, I was in Pennsylvania and then I moved out to Vegas and I've been in Vegas my whole life. It's just Vegas. It's hot, desert, plain. <laughs> so, it's know. a lot of fun when I go out there. I love going to Vegas. Yeah. go every year, and usually I'm partying with uh, the American psycho Stefan Bonner out there, who's a uh, uh, folks folks know from from the UFC as well. And I try to link you up with Stefan Bonner because Jenny has been transitioning from being a world champion in jujitsu to the wild and wacky world of professional wrestling. Isn't that right? Yes, it is a transition that's been happening for a few months now. Uh, and I'm still actively competing in jiu-jitsu, but I also kind of added this, which has been really fun. And I've had a few matches, and it's just been... Uh, it's been a good transition. Like, I like it. It's so different than competing in jiu-jitsu, but it's, it's a good fit for my personality right now. I've got to ask you, Jenny. You know, we here with TVT Podcast. We are partnered up with Canada's top combat sports podcast, the Hannibal TV, uh, Devin Hannibal Nicholson. That was how I first heard you make that announcement when I saw the Hannibal interview you. Uh, did, did the Hannibal inspire you to make this recent career maneuver into the world of professional wrestling? Yeah. Or was it, was it your, your father, your padre, Tito? No, it was 100% Hannibal. Like, I had always done wrestling, like, as a kid, you know, we had wrestling organization in the in the basement. We would always play around with wrestling. But I hadn't really thought about it as a career or even considered it. And then I did this interview with Hannibal, and he had asked me if I ever thought about wrestling, and I was like, well, no, I actually hadn't. And he set some stuff up and asked me if I was willing to try it, and it, it literally took off so fast since then. And so, yeah, 100% credit to him. So um, if, if the fans love me, credit to him. If they hate me, it's his fault, you know? <laughs> well, speak, do you want them to love you or hate you, uh, Jenny? Do you want them to? Because, you know, I've always loved being a heel in the wild and wacky world of professional wrestling. When I, when I went to Kentucky to take on an old nemesis of mine from the world of MMA and the pro wrestling squared circle, Adam Newsom, I went to eastern Kentucky with a foreign object to help the youth. It was something they'd never seen. It was called the toothbrush. And I went out <laughs> oh, there God. with the toothbrushes to help save the youth. And I've always loved the booze. Do you love to be loved or would you love to be hated? You know, it, it, I'm like an extreme person. So I, I'd rather be one extreme than the next as opposed to like walk down the middle. I mean, being loved is great, but being hated is, is also equally great sometimes because it fuels you so yeah. much. Like it's, I don't know, I can't decide. Yeah. It's kind of like, I, oh, we'll see what kind of mood I wake up. I could kind of see you, Jenny, <laughs> and, and, and Jordan. If Jordan, that was going to be a question I'll ask Jordan along these lines. I could kind of see you as being that super uh, smoking hot vixen that walks around like she's too good for everybody. <laughs> Looks down her nose at the at the fans that have to pay a ticket just for the honor of seeing her. Oh my gosh, my true personality comes out in what three minutes? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I mean, I have a very sweet side, but, you know, cross that line, and, yeah, I, yeah, I can be quite the opposite, too, little devil. So I guess we'll see how it all unfolds. But. We, we were talking about a, a mutual friend of ours on the way over here, uh, Neil Melanson, who uh, did a great review of a book that I wrote years ago, Rough and Tumble, with the great Eric Paulson, and I uh, brought Kamal Shalarus out there to train with him in his UFC career. And uh, that kind of leads me to this question. He was roommates with the guy that all the wrestling fans will know, uh, Brian Danielson, uh, Daniel Bryan, who's married to uh, one of the Bellas. And just a quick story, when uh, Nicole Kalachi, who everybody knows now as Nikki Bella, was here in Florida uh, at the FSW, which was a kind of a training ground for WWE. I was down there with, uh, with a guy named Dirty White Boy, and I was helping them with their promos. She was so shy. She didn't want to cut a promo, and I was the sheik. And I called her in the ring on one of our, our little house shows at the school, and I told her, young lady, you have the honor, the honor to meet the most handsome man in all of the Middle East. 
So pack it up. Pack it up and kiss my beautiful Iranian foot. And I stuck my foot out and she hauled back and she slapped me right again. I told her, I said, don't hold back. And you heard that pop. And I went flying out of the ring. So I helped her to become the vixen. And I think I could help you, Jenny, and you, Jordan, to become the vixens in professional wrestling. Because that's something that people need. Some heels to be hated. What do you think about that, ladies? All I heard was I think I get to slap him in a few minutes. <laughs> so. That's what I heard, too. So. I love that. I love to build the crowd into a frenzy. How about you, Jordan? Um, would you like to be loved or hated by the fans? It's a little bit of both. I think for all my life I was mostly like honestly hated. I have no clue why, but honestly hated. So it kind of just fueled me into becoming the person that I am today just because it like was so much motivation. Like, yeah, of course I love being loved, but also being hated is just as just as fun. So. Well, women get very catty. And very, you think it was yeah. because, insane. You know, being very attractive women, do you think that's why you were you were hated growing up? Growing up, my mom always told me, they're like, don't worry, they're just jealous of you. And I'm like, what are they jealous of? <laughs> like, I don't understand. <laughs> but now that I'm older, I kind of see it a little bit. Like, I'm not a bad kid or anything like that. So I'm like, I understand why people would be kind of jealous. But at the same time, like, I'm very friendly. So I don't know. It's just people's perspective on me. Yeah, you said like an outgoing, friendly personality. My daughter is very beautiful as well. She's like a year older than you. But she has that, always has had that resting bitch face. I get that oh, yeah. all the time. She, you know, you look like you're smiling. Let me see it. Let me see that <laughs> resting bitch face. Get the camera look on you, Jordan. Look at her social media. Like, yeah. I've never Let's seen see it. Let's see like it. And let's oh, see it. Here. How do I do it? Okay. Where I'm like. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I'll look at people sometimes. And sometimes when they're talking to me, that's how I'll look. And I'll be like, like, I'm processing everything that they're saying in my head, but I'll just have that straight blank face. And they'll be like, mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah. but it's well, whatever. <laughs> Definitely. And well, my face can't hide anything. Like if someone says something ridiculous, like my eyeballs will roll in my head about 35 times mm -hmm. before you finish a sentence. Let's, so. let's see a little, little role playing here. If I'm in the ring with you and, and, I, and I call you into the ring and I say, and what, what would your reaction be if I say, I want you to get on your knees, young lady, and kiss it, the foot of the most handsome man in all of the middle ass. What would your reaction be? I would say, you can kiss the ass of the most gorgeous woman in wrestling. There you go. I love it. I love it. What about you, Jordan? What would you What would you say? If, I think I would have the same to? reaction as that girl. I'd probably slap you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess that and I hate so. feet. Like, I hate gross. Feet, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, any other body part probably wouldn't have been as bad as like the foot. Like I should have offered up another body part. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> then you would have got a bigger smack. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, what do? You, how would you feel about Jordan going into the world of professional wrestling and joining you? I think that that would be fantastic. <laughs> I, I, I think it would be really good. I think it. I think there's a lot of like. Um, well, there's uh, what is it? Rey Mysterio and his son are wrestlers. Yeah. I, I don't know if there's any mother daughter or sisters. I guess you know. So you know the Bella twin sisters, but I'm thinking, have there has there ever been a mother daughter tag team? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, as far as I know, because I was trying to to find that too, and I don't think I that, understand that my phone just randomly goes <laughs> off now, and like I'm searching terms it misses with you. random words. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's searching. No, they didn't find any. <laughs> I, I'm trying to get her. She was at a few practices with me. Um, she used to be a gymnast. I think it'd be a really good transition for her too. So. Now, Jordan, you you were a, a great gymnast, but you had a, a pretty bad accident. Really bad, yeah. What happened? Um, I was training like level ten. That's probably the highest level. That is the highest level you can go before like the um, Olympics, college, and everything like that. So it was like my whole life from my. It was my whole life gymnastics, and so I was learning a new skill. It was like a double backflip on the floor. And so when I was going, I just completely buckled right as soon as I was going into the double back. And so I did one flip and then I did a half rotation and I landed right on top of my like neck. And oh. so my feet came over and then my neck, like I was a whole pile, you know. And then I kind of bounced off the floor. I have the video, but I bounced off the floor. Yeah. 
And then I just laid there because I was like so stunned. I was like, I thought I was paralyzed. Like it was the worst thing ever. And so that's when my gymnastics career kind of ended. And then after I was like healed and stuff, well, not really healed, like I still have permanent damage. But after I thought I was okay, I decided to go back and I was like, we'll try one more time, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so I was like, we're not done yet. Cause it was like my whole life. It was my passion. I really loved it. And so I went back for like a month or two and then I ended up fracturing the growth plate in my knee. And oh. that's when I was like, yeah, I'm done. Like that's. And she actually went back after that. And then yeah. she, like, it, she just wasn't, she didn't give it enough time, I mm -hmm. guess, before. Time to heal. Yeah. I got some good skills from it. I can still do handstands. I'm pretty strong from it. So when I got into, like, um, the gym and stuff and weightlifting, yeah. it really helped a lot with that. So. It does. You know, gymnastics, uh, and a serious note, is it, it's, it's, you can't get that strength no. in your leg. My daughter did gymnastics as well. She's younger. And then you look at, like, in, in wrestling, we were talking, like, Mark Coleman. Uh, not Mark Coleman, Mark Schultz. He didn't start wrestling until his junior year in high school. Went on to be a you know, gold medalist. They made the Foxcatcher movie about him and his brother. And it, he was a gymnast. And that core strength that you get from gymnastics. Insane. So on that note, Jordan, um, would that those injuries inhibit you from following your mother and being a tag team in the I ring? I always told her, I was like, that's what I'm scared of is like someone hitting me wrong or like me landing on my neck wrong because like it still does hurt, you know, like I can't stand for long periods of time because I can't do certain things, you know. And so I think that's what's always stopped me from doing wrestling. I'm just kind of scared. <laughs> that's kind of it. So but have I you mean, done grappling with your mom? I OK, <laughs> so I did. Yeah. I just <laughs> don't like the what is it? The she doesn't like being taught. I she doesn't don't. like the closeness because it's yeah. so it's so close. And and a sure. lot of girls come in, and you know one of the first things you learn is like getting into full guard or mount and like you how do you keep that there like your hip on hip you know and so mm -hmm. just girls in gen not I, it, more so than guys I think girls sometimes have an issue with the sure. closeness, uh, especially like nogi because there's less clothes. Like gi is not as bad. There's a whole big you know, yeah. outfit in between you. But it was, she was younger and it was just too much. And everyone was like older. Yeah. And so it was like a little teenage girl. It's a little weird, and yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. I, mean, I completely understand like the art and like the whole sport of it all. It's sure. just for me, I was like, I don't like being touched. So like that whole closeness and everything like that, I was just, it's not really my thing right now. Mm -hmm. Who knows, maybe it is now, but I don't really know. Like when I see her do it and she's winning all this stuff, I'm like, that's so cool. It'd be like a great self-defense mechanism, you know. That's but awesome. for me, I'm just like, eh. And I mean, our school is super respectful. We've never yeah. had issues. I think it's just like the person them, like her. She just, you know, sometimes she doesn't want to be touched sure. by people yeah. that she knows, and so <laughs> yeah. Sure. Now, and Jenny, you were in Vegas, and we were talking about this. You know, the history of UFC kind of follows the history of all the gyms in Vegas, and during the Fertitta era was when they had started to allow sanctioning in Vegas and all the fights it became the the MMA capital. And that's when all the gyms started opening there. And did you train? I know Neil's been away from Extreme Couture for quite a while, but did you train with him uh, while he was there? No. Um, when I had met him, my son was actually doing jujitsu uh, when he was there. But I had, hadn't had started until after I had left Extreme Couture. I had done the fitness classes there um, with Tim Lane, who um, is now passed, but also uh, Jake Bonacci. Like, he, he does really great stuff. Uh, and it was really good for me, like, physically. And I would always watch the jiu-jitsu classes on the other side and be like, oh, that's awesome. But I was also nervous myself to start it <clears throat> by myself. And so then... Uh, I had left there, and uh, my uncle moved out from Pennsylvania, and we're like, yeah, let's start this together. And so then I was able to – it was better me going with someone than by myself. Yeah. And so then we had started, and I had started with Fretz and Pachau, and then uh, he had left, and so now I'm back with him. So, uh, yeah, at his gym, he has his own gym. It's great. Like, if you're ever in Vegas, check it out. He He's amazing. He his lineage is Osvaldo Alves. He's like a five time world champion. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we got we gotta get you over to uh Matt Freeman's uh school inside BJJ. I've had the pleasure of being a guest on their show. Um he was on there one time even with Gordon Ryan when he had a feud with a friend of mine. And uh, he's got pro wrestling promotion now. Freeman does. Inside BJJ, they have their own pro wrestling promotion. That's actually where Stephen Bonner was injured 
uh, out there. Yeah, that was um, a bad injury. Yeah, really bad injury. <laughs> that would be a perfect promotion for you. And, and I'm telling you, I really think you need to wrestle Paige Van Zandt. I think that would. I think that would be. She's doing re- pro wrestling now. She's in AEW. Man, that would be a sellout anywhere. I need to start talking to some promotions about that. Yeah, I just saw that she was training with uh, Gangrel at his school. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, and I met him at his wedding. So, yeah, yeah. that would be an interesting matchup for sure. Gangrel was, was supposed to be the one last weekend when uh, I saved uh, Andrew Anderson in the ring in Daytona. That was supposed to be Gangrel. That was uh, gonna save him, but he oh. he no showed. He didn't do it, so that's uh-huh. why I had to left. I, I had in. to jump in, and and I and I tell people, you know, it was it was all those those cold ones and rum and cokes that the Grandomaniacs, my fans were buying, were buying me if I looked a little slow in there. I hadn't been in a, in a <laughs> ring in a while. <laughs> yeah, but Grand Gurel is a, is a, is a great guy. Now, did you train with um, Glenn uh, Gilberti? Because you mentioned future stars. I know when my buddy when Baroni was down there, he was training with Disco. Uh, Disco Inferno, or did he leave Vegas? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think yeah. I know. So who, you, you mentioned Future Stars. Yeah, so Future yeah. Stars of Wrestling is a school I train at in Vegas. Uh, Sin Bodhi is my coach. Oh, okay. And he actually had trained the Bella Twins, too. Awesome. And, and he was trained by Jake the Snake. So Jake the Snake, yeah. That's also a great lineage. Too. Awesome, so. absolutely. Now, I was going to tell you a story about the time I met your dad when I met Tito. Uh, and it was in, and it relates to our last guest that was in here, uh, UFC Hall of Famer Dan the Beast Severn was just in here with us a week ago. And I, w- I want to say this was like 99 or 2000. And it, I was doing uh, pro wrestling, and I had also done what they call no holds barred fighting, which is now they call MMA, the pre MMA. And it was actually Dan Severn that told my buddy Dave and I to because Dave had wrestled for Rutgers and he done judo and uh, he said you guys you know you do hard style matches but make it look more like make it more like a pancreas you know people know you know the pancreas style and that was with Dan when he did UWFI so uh, it was at Trumbull High School and Dave and I had a match that Dan refed and I remember your dad was with King Kong Bundy the late great King Kong Bundy, and they were standing there. They were selling their merch, and uh, I remember Dan and I went went over by the table after our match, and uh, I talked to your dad a little bit, and he said, and he said that was a great match, brother. He said you guys need to bring that on the road, mm-hmm. because it was a it was a novelty. It looked like what they call you know MMA style now, and I said, yeah, that's what me and Dave are doing. You know, we're doing this. And I remember Dan the B7 remarked, now this was before my hair turned gray. This is when I had the, the thick black hair. And he said, and Dan said, you know, you two look like you could be brothers. You, <laughs> you and you and him, you and Tito. Yeah, so uh, it, was a, it was a pleasure and an honor, you know, to, to meet him briefly that time. Yeah. Yeah. That's an awesome story. Yeah, so I, I, I want to ask you uh, a little bit about uh, your dad, you know, you, you and your dad was kind of like a strange kind of situation. <laughs> and I saw the video, I saw him say that, um, he's wishes you the best of luck in, uh, professional wrestling, because what I think would be a great gimmick, I don't know if this could ever happen, is if you and your daughter were a tag team and he was like, you know, more in a suit jacket as your manager. <laughs> That would be interesting. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I saw that video too. That was great to hear. Um, I I haven't talked to him that much since then, so I don't know. I mean, yeah, eventually it would be nice to have like those conversations and talk about stuff like that. So as far as I can say right now, yeah, that would it would be good. I think it would be really great. I think fans would love it. I think um, bringing generations together is always a good thing and, and exciting. Because you could, it, it, that would be something that would never been done. I, yeah, I think yeah. three generations. Yeah. Even like, a, even like a mixed, I did the mixed tag with, with Bonner uh, with the girls, even like a mixed tag match against three or two girls and a guy. I don't know if he could still get in the ring, but uh, something like that would be, would be really cool. 
Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, possibilities and opportunities out there. So absolutely, we shall see how it goes. <laughs> so what y'all have going on with this with this company you're starting? It sounds awesome. You know, uh, Dan was just in here, and I think he mentioned on the show. He mentioned to me off air that he's done a lot of the, the stem cell treatments. Talk a little bit about those stem cells. I'll throw it to the both of you about uh, what they can do for you and what the process is like. So, I mean, we're in the process of learning. So we, uh, we from our own perspective, I know that Gangrel has gotten them. Uh, he's come down to the Jersey office and he couldn't sleep in bed for like months. And then he got them and was able to sleep in bed. So, I mean, just the pain relief, the inflammation relief. Um, Dr. Caprio had, I believe it was four strokes and he got stem cells uh, through the nasal cavity into his brain to reverse all of that, all of the side effects from the strokes. He was so. like walking with a cane, like it mm -hmm. was just crazy. And now he walks with no cane after his stem cell treatment. So I think it's yeah, good. and it's really traveling through. Um, they have clients now. Um, one of the Diaz brothers is going to be there. Uh, the Albanian bear who is undefeated. He he's a client there, and so it's we're super excited. Mm -hmm. I mean, to get the word out uh, to help people, and not only people who are athletes and things like that. I mean, they have people who. Uh, there was a patient who only had, you know, a few weeks to live and, and they're giving him treatments and, and that seems to help. And so, I mean, just the testimonials of people, I've had them personally in my knees, like my knees were so bad and I wasn't even able to bend my knee and, and now like it's almost back to 100%. And so, I mean, what are your options? Your options are to, to try this and I, I haven't heard any bad results or, you know, try and get surgery. And even if you've had surgery, like the time, if you get stem cells after a surgery, like the healing time is sped up so incredibly fast. I think fast. people are so scared because it's so new. Yeah. Like they're just now hearing about it and they're like, is it really gonna work? Like, you know, but like the results that are coming out of it is what people should be looking at, not like how it's new, you know what sure. I mean? Sure. Yeah, yeah and, and what's the process? Like when you get them, how long is it before the you start to see and feel the results? So um, you're not allowed, like, so I had it in my knees, and you're not supposed to work out for two weeks. So, like, two weeks to set them and let them do what they're supposed to do. And I'm sorry that I don't have more scientific talk right now. <laughs> um, but when you inject them, you do this uh, ultrasound, and you can see them going right into the problem areas. So they don't want you to do anything to mess it up. So you can't take, like, ibuprofen or anything to thin the blood for two weeks because they want them to work and get the most benefit after the two weeks and there's improvement immediately there is and then after the two weeks it just kind of gets better and better i remember one day like i just got out of bed and i'm like holy crap like this is this is insane you know it just kept getting better and better so i would say a few weeks until you get until you notice like the big jump, but it just kind of like happens, <laughs> you know, like you're yeah. in a lot of pain, but Gang Girl said it was, it was immediate, so. Jordan, are, are you gonna get them with uh, injuries you've had from I gymnastics? plan on it, actually, awesome. I do. I don't know when, because we're going to Jersey, so we're gonna go visit the doctor's office, I think tomorrow we're going. Yeah. And so I wanted to get them, but you can't like lift certain heavy things and stuff like that, so I feel like it's better if I get them when our practice is open in Vegas, because then I can be home and stuff and I don't have to carry around luggage. But probably my back and my neck for sure, just because they still hurt to this day. So yeah, you're getting the perfect zone there because in Las Vegas we say you know the fight capital with MMA yeah. and also the pro wrestling with all the shows you do. I know uh, I told a funny story on on the show when we did with John Elite of the Silverton Casino with uh, FSW when. Phil Baroni was supposed to be my tag team partner, and I flew out there. You guys can listen to that story uh, and watch that show. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you got all the pro wrestlers out there, all the fighters out there, and you're right in the middle of that network. So that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, and then, like, we're so close to California, so any of the, you know, people that want to come out from California. And who doesn't want to come to Vegas? Yeah. <laughs> so, who doesn't want to see right. these? Who doesn't yeah. want to? Also, who doesn't want to go see these two beautiful right. women? Yeah. You know, come on. That's just I mean, the that's the main reason to buy your ticket. Yeah. So. You're going to have guys with no pain just coming in. Right. Themselves. They'll just look at us and be like, yeah. I'm fixed. Come on. <laughs> So uh, you mentioned testimonials, and I kind of want to close with this because this is our Cinco de Mayo special. 
and I made a very special, and, and producer Evan uh, can try this as well. I, I have a cookbook out uh, called Cooking with the King, my e-cookbook, and I made a very special dish for uh, you ladies to try for Cinco de Mayo. And it is my special uh, uh, Mexican uh, ensalada de pollo. And it's a Mexican chicken salad. Oh, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Fantastico. We and can't I, wait to try it. Yeah. I'm going to, uh, we'll let you know. And I'm putting together a little video uh, on it uh, that shows the process of how I make it to promote my cookbook for Cinco de Mayo. And uh, I want you all to try it. And we'll shoot you and get your reactions. For sure. Uh, I could definitely perfect. use a cookbook because I am not. not <laughs> yeah, we don't know how to cook kitchen. that one. You, you, you too, Jordan? No. Oh, no. I mean, after <laughs> growing up with someone who doesn't cook in the kitchen, yeah. it's kind of like, well, I don't need to cook, you know? So. Yeah. yeah. You know, I tell you, I, I live with those, live with and the uh, Venezuelan women for years and a lot of the Latinas they love to cook they love love to cook and uh, you know I I love to cook I'm I'm a chef so you know you don't you don't need to cook you, you just just find a man uh, that true that, exactly that has those <laughs> that has those skills we we make my son do all the cooking yeah and he's I mean, really good at we, it I meal prep but it, it's so plain like it's just. Yeah. I, when I was younger, I used to boil chicken to try and get like every drop of sodium. Oh, like there was no, no. no flavor. Like this no dish, flavor. I'll just take you through just the highlights. <laughs> this dish, I grill. I grill the chicken. I shred the chicken. It has guacamole. It has uh, beef steak tomatoes chopped in there. It has an avocado oil uh, salad dressing. It has Mexican chives. It's cold, fresh lime squeezed on top. It's fantastico. It's muy delicioso. Y es perfecto con un margarita o un cerveza como corona. Uh, it's perfect for all our Latino friends listening on the Cinco de Mayo. Mm -hmm. It is it is absolutely the perfect meal. And uh, you can get it, get my e-cookbook, Cooking with the King, on the Amazon Kindle store. And I want to thank... It the, like the perfect these. summer salad. I yes, yeah. it is. It's perfect by the beach, <laughs> a la playa, a la piscina, at the pool. Uh, it's great because you don't want to have anything heavy or hot. You know, you want something nice, cold, and refreshing. Yeah. You know, especially here in Florida. You're you're in South Florida. Yeah. So I wanna I wanna close. I gotta sing one thing. Yeah, one oh, thing. Wait. I'm Okay. <laughs> just join the studio first. So if you want to come to Vegas before our um, clinic opens, be sure to check out our new promotion, UWW, which is Ultimate Women of Wrestling. Awesome. I'm the general manager. It's an all-women promotion. Our first show is May 21st at the Sahara Las Vegas Casino on the Strip. Tickets are on sale now. We have an amazing roster from our main event is Ivelisse and Maserati. Maserati is a hometown girl. From Las Vegas, and we have an artist, Nikki Page, performing. So it's going to be a wonderful evening. You won't want to miss it. So check it out. And and I want to wrap this up and throw it to Jenny. And I want Jenny, I want you to do a call out, a promo, calling out Paige Van Zant, and we'll close it out with that. So I this you know what you're not the first person who said that. Numerous people said that. So I did see your practice that you jumped off a plane and you jumped right into the ring, which is awesome. Um, I also believe in super hard work. I would love to get you in the ring. I know that you're pretty new. I'm pretty new. We both have kind of shoot style backgrounds, and so I mean, are you going to stretch her like a rubber band, Jenny Santana? I mean, I'm sure my jujitsu is stronger, so I think yeah. once we would get on the ground of any sort, I would, you know, have that one. But, um, <laughs> you know, I want to be nice, but at the same time, let, let's do this. I mean, I think it would be great for both of us. And um, so let's, King Girl, set it up. I know that you see her, so. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I want to thank you gorgeous ladies, Jordan and Jenny, for coming on the show. And Feliz Cinco de Mayo. <laughs>